Hi everybody, this is Serona Rose, the host of the Astro Tarot Show on thecauldron.net. It's a place where music feeds the soul. If you haven't checked that out, I urge you to go on over and check that out. It's a great radio station. But on Thursday nights, they allot me an hour to give you what is happening in our celestial planetary energies. Now, just want to get started by saying that astrology is neutral. It doesn't cause things to happen. It just describes the underlying energies that we might be feeling. And my goal as a doing this show and bringing this information to you is to make you consciously aware of the energy that's going on. So I hope that you enjoy this show. Um, you know, a lot of people have been talking to me and, you know, letting me know that um, they're really harmonizing with this, that this reading is really touching their lives. And yes, it is in different ways uh, because we all have different paths that we walk. All of our birth charts are different. So it's it's just wonderful to hear that. Um, when I do the Astro Tarot, I do an astrology reading in the tarot, and that is my way of bringing the um, as above, so below, bringing our stars down to earth and grounding it. So there's a few things that I want to talk to you all about because um, there's some major, major movements, aspects, and um, within our celestial bodies that really need to be looked at. If you haven't checked out my show last week on the cauldron.net, go on over and you can click on the archives. Uh, you do have to purchase it. It's only $1.99, but the proceeds do go into helping this station go forward and supporting the artist. So as I discussed in that last one, the energy is getting intense. And as of now, we are in Taurus energy which is all about stability, um, about how I support myself. And we talked about in the last show about Jupiter going retrograde. We also talked about, um, you know, that can mean a little bit of, of extremes. When a planet goes retrograde, you know, it's not really moving backwards. It's just an illusion. We're just, you know, we've passed it, so to speak. So, when they when they go retrograde, they're very strong. Their energy is very strong. And we, we think about the re's, all the re's, remembering, revisiting. Um, but Jupiter, you know, he is our planet of expansion. So sometimes we can go to extremes on things. You know, we can make make this one small thing explode into a bigger um, a bigger project. Um, he's going to be retrograde in the sign of Sagittarius until August the 11th. So, you know, Jupiter, he's not all bad. He yes, he is the planet of expansion, but he is also joyous. He's happy. He's very optimistic, and he's about abundance. Um, and and what the really cool thing is is that here in, in mixing with his home his home sign of Sagittarius. You know, he's really going to be um, having a philosophical look at his life as well. Um, you know, you're going to be uh, doing some soul searching, self-discovery, looking into what we spiritually believe, um, what we feel. We're looking for deeper meanings because Sagittarius is all about discovering the truths. And here, you know, do not rule out the romance department because this is also a good placement of finding uh, for love and finding a deeper connection. Now, the signs that will really feel this Jupiter retrograde are Sagittarius, Gemini, Pisces, and Scorpio. Uh, Gemini, uh, this placement combined with Mars in your sign as well as your planet Mercury moving into Aries, you will need to focus and prioritize your life. It could be a little hectic. Um, the energy can make you feel scattered and have you putting too many things on your plate, uh, getting overwhelmed. Um, so watch out for that. Make sure you're not uh, saying yes to things you should be saying no to. Now for Scorpio, 
This can bring you a fresh sense of self-assurance as well as a sense of calmness. Um, now, for Sagittarius, romance will be a big thing for you. You could be a bit touchy as Jupiter's energy is magnified. So, you know, those things that normally wouldn't, that, you know, you wouldn't give two glances at will really be capturing your attention at this time. So you will want to, um, you know, really be honest with yourself and others during this time. Pisces, uh, change can only occur when you step outside of your comfort zone and physically take those steps to make it happen. Um, you know, you need to be compassionate with ourselves. And that's a lot of, that's for a lot of us, really. A lot of us are more compassionate with other people than we are to ourselves. I know I am a son Aries, so I am a harder critic on myself than anyone else can ever be. Um, and sometimes, you know, signs can do that. We can place ourselves to a higher standard than others, but we need to remember to be compassionate with her, with ourselves. Um, and you know, Pisces, this is going to be a time where you're going to need to remain resilient. Um, you know, keep your course, take your time. Don't forget to breathe. You know, these waters can be deep. So make sure you're, you know, staying within yourself and not getting lost in that nice Neptunian energy that the water offers. Uh, Pisces, it is time for you to move forward. So it's time for you to make those active steps and go forward. Now, back on the 20th, on the 23rd and 24th, um, I'm just going over my notes from last um, show. So, but on the 23rd and 24th, Pluto will go retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. Now, this, the 23rd and 24th, depends on where you are in our world. Um, and it's going to be retrograde until October the 3rd. And interestingly here, it's only going to move in between, in between the 23rd and 20th degrees of Capricorn. Now, like I have been stating on our shows, that Pluto and Saturn have been hanging out together in Capricorn for a minute now. <clears throat> and their conjunction will be coming up in the early 2020. And this energy is really going to make things happen. This is serious business energy. This is getting down to the nitty gritty and working hard to get things done. Now, in my next show, this coming up Thursday, I'm going to offer um, examples in our timeline of when Pluto and Saturn has had a conjunction. Now, there's a lot of events that happen around that time, and I think that you will find it very interesting to find out the dates when this happens. So this energy is intense. You know, we have to think about what Pluto is. Pluto is Lord of the Underworld. He cleans you out. He makes you face things. He makes you deal with them. He doesn't do it nicely. He will put it in your face. And with the influence of, of Uranus in Taurus, you know, Uranus is that lightning. It's, that, it's, it's wanting change now and bam, it's going to explode and make it happen right? And Taurus doesn't like change. He likes to keep going, you know, same old, slow and steady. And this is a lot of intense energy. So yes, it's going to affect those elements that deal with the earth, such as yes, our physical earth, um, our security, our money, our financial security, our physical, those things that we physically value. Uh, I will say that this is pulling in a lot of karmic energy because it is also having a dance with the south node that's in Capricorn. And, you know, the north node is now in Leo. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I had a little visitor come in. So I was at the South Node is in Capricorn and the North Node is in Cancer. So now what Pluto and Saturn 
will do is this energy is going to basically take us inward a little bit. Um, it's going to make us uh, or bring our attention to those things where we have lost our power, where we're just giving it away. It can also uh, make you look at when you gave your power away. Um, it's about facing our, our fears, sometimes our deepest fears, and releasing the things that we are too attached to. Now, I will go in more depth with this in the next show. Um, this, uh, this Thursday, it is the, uh, the 25th of April. I will go in more depth with this. Um, we're really having to leave behind a false sense of security, so to speak. When this happens, you know, Capricorn is about our governments, it's about the institutions, and it's about foundations as well. So this energy is kind of like really making us refocus on things that are really valuable to us. Instead of having it be all about the physical, well, we're going to want the emotional and the spiritual as well. Um, this time can be a time of faded events, um, and it's one of really just looking over what has control over your life. Um, this energy is one about taking responsibility. Now, it's practical energy, and it's stubborn, and it doesn't like change, and Saturn's influence, well, he's like the father, and he's all about boundaries. But you see, boundaries can be a good thing. Boundaries can be a healthy thing. So these two together, um, all of this combination, really, um, this is the energy of aggressively protecting our values and our traditions, our roots. But, you know, we have to figure out what is our roots. Um, change can make the signs um, that I mentioned before, the um, Saturn, um, the signs that will really be affected by this, such as Sagittarius, Gemini, Pisces, and Scorpio, um, it can really make those signs go straight into fear. Um, it can also make us want to escape. Now we have um, Jupiter's retrograde and he's having this little conversation with Neptune going on. So there could be a moment of wanting to escape, escapism. And um, it can make us just want to check out and not deal with what's going on. Um, you know, Pluto is really working hard to make, you know, these fears be known to make us deal with what we need to deal with. And this energy uh, can be translated into uh, changes of the old power system, getting an adjustment so things are more balanced. Um, we are about um, honoring our values, our healthy boundaries, and uh, working for a better future for us all, not just our short term, but in long term. How is it going to be not just five months down the road, not just five years, but how about 10 years, 20? We want stuff to, you know, last for the long haul. Now, you know, Capricorn energy can be a harsh energy, but once its heart is touched, it is a committed person. It is committed to its path, to its partner, to its cause. So this is this is a nice energy, believe it or not. I know I, I can be a little hard on Capricorn energy, but you know, know that all of these energies are there for a specific reason. They're to help us through a specific step in our evolution on this planet, right? So 
Back on April the 14th, we had a grand fire trine, um, and it's shown on the charts as, you know, a triangle. Uh, this trine involved the moon at 24 degrees, Leo, um, the sun at 24 degrees in Aries, and Jupiter at 24 degrees in Sagittarius. Um, 24 is reduced down to 6 in numerology, which is about unconditional love, compassion, empathy. Uh, it's Mother Earth. It's Gaia. Um, it's considered a perfect number. Isn't that funny? And it represents balance and harmony. It's about security, responsibility, and this fire trine is really good, all about getting us into that independence and that self-sufficiency that we should have. It's doing things our own way, and it's about not living someone else's story. It's about living our own. Um, <clears throat> A lot of things happen at this time, such as the Notre Dame Cathedral burning. Um, there was a mosque that was burned, also followed by several explosions and attacks in churches. Um, so we're seeing this fiery kind of, um, this is aggressive energy. Um, we have a lot of rage and aggression. It's mostly like a suppression type energy, and that suppression energy can create rage. So um, I will touch more on those um, as in the next show of what is exactly playing out. Um, I did mention that Mercury moved into Aries. And this is giving us that mental jolt that we need, especially after it was spending time in, in Pisces. Pisces is a beautifully um, healing energy, but we can get lost in the illusions and we can be um, foggy headed and not really clear with, with our mental thinking. Um, Pisces has very much this, that emotionally charged water. And like I said, you know, it's great for healing, but once you dive deep down in those waters, um, we are lost in Neptune's dreamy energy. Now, remember, Neptune is the Hollywood. It's the illusions. It's the dreams. It is almost like a magician. When, a, when you are watching a magician, he's showing you this, he's moving, he's dressed, he's, you know, he's presenting you this and he wants you to see this because he doesn't want you to see what's really happening. So as Mercury enters fire, all those illusions will dry up and we will gain some clarity. Um, the energy will heighten as we went into the full moon in Libra on the 19th. Um, this moon could have felt like a blue moon and we're still feeling its effects. Um, this is the second full moon in Libra that we've had. The one in March was in Libra in the beginning degrees. And this full moon actually took place in 29 degrees Libra, which means it can trigger the shadow side of Libra. And yes, full moons do light the shadows. They show us what is hidden from us, what is hidden from our sight, what is hidden from our clarity. Uh, Libra hints to relationships as its planet is Venus, um, but it's also about balance and equality. Uh, with the influence of Pluto and Saturn and Capricorn, the things that have unfair holds over us, um, what is abusing power will be revealed and I think that um, many of us are seeing that happening in the United States right now as we speak. Um, added to this revealing energy, uh, this full moon will be opposite Uranus and Taurus. So there's a great pull for change, especially in balancing the energies within relationships, like the, the masculine and the feminine energy, balancing those. Um, also about what we consider um, our security. I am feeling the energy of shifting from, you know, security in these physical things, of keeping up with the Joneses, of, you know, those that just feed the ego. And I see it being um, turned to those things that are more in line with our soul and what really matters to us. Um, you know, it has to be logical, yes. But we also have to be in line. We have to have our soul there, our heart there, as well as our mind. Um, you know, it's more of coming 
becoming more conscious and having more peace within. Um, you know, we expri we you know we lovingly, lovingly appreciate all of this expansion. We do, and all of this abundance. But we need to connect more with nourishment and compassion. So yeah, there's a lot of astrologers that have um, that have talked about you know we will have different ways of growing our food. We'll become more eco friendly or eco friendly. I'm sorry. Um, it it will be um, it will be one of more of conscious living. So in in you know we are more wanting to uh, balance ourselves as well. We're, we're mostly focusing on that of balancing our work with play. We know that if we work too much, then our, um, our family life, you know, um, that goes into chaos. And if we're always with family and always having fun, where our financial life goes in chaos. So we have to learn to balance that life, work, play, um, trying to keep that nice balance going on. And this is no matter if you're self-employed or you work for another. A lot of people who are self-employed, uh, we go non-stop sometimes and we just were unstoppable. So we are reminded that we have to connect to ourselves. We have to touch bases with that. Um, you know, we have to take care of our emotional health. Um, there is going to be some exciting changes. Um, for some, if you're if you're not heeding that warning, you will be drugged in that direction. Um, you will be forced to make changes where they need to be made. And that's never really a good, it's always good to um, make your changes yourself instead of something happen and then you have to do it. Um, the full moon is making um, an aspect with Venus. So this will touch on our relationships. Are your relationships balanced? Are you giving more than you're getting? And this is emotionally. Are you emotionally supported in your relationships? Um, like I said, this is going to hit on the romantic relationships especially. Um, now, well, this energy can cause anxiety, restlessness. It can trigger our ego in a non-healthy way. Uh, watch out for that. We could end up taking risks that are really going to cost us in the long run. Uh, Taurus energy is slow and steady. So the changes that's going to be happening during this time is going to be felt for years to come. So make sure you're making the right decisions on a level head because this will affect you for the long run, not just for here and now long run. I mean, you could might, you know, you could do something that you could later regret. So be mindful. Um, we, this moon really pulls us for the need to change, feeling our independence, having a sense of adventure. It's a restless in relationships. So you need to watch out for affairs during this time. Affairs uh, can be highlighted. We can also be a little moody a bit anxious. Uh, it, we can have our deep-seated fears exposed. Uh, it can put us in an energy that we're not really comfortable with. This is a completion moon and it ties us to the March Libra full moon as well as the Aries new moon that we just had. At the end of Libra, we can feel the lunacy, the chaotic energy that that full moon can bring. Um, the moon is about nurturing and it is our mother aspect. So there is a tenderness and a vulnerability that can be a, that can be triggered within us during this time. So watch out for that. Um, you can become too, uh, too defensive. Um, so, you know, watch out for that. You cannot be in control of absolutely everything. And with the sun and Uranus being so close, it wants change and it wants it yesterday. So again, watch about the risks that you are taking. We must remember our free will. And with this, we do have to remember our responsibility. We are responsible for our own actions and every action will have a reaction. So remember that. And yes, this energy is about taking action. It's about taking action and standing up. 
Now, I want to talk to you more and more about this, but I will do so on my next show. Please tune in Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is on thecauldron.net. This is the Astro Tarot Show, and I am Serona Rose, and I hope to see you all Thursday night. Have a great day.